10.6 is called Segment Relationships in Circles. Um, the, uh, a link to the guided notes is in the description below if you want to print it out and follow along. Okay, so um, we start off with the uh, segments of chords theorem. Remember, um, a, a chord is a line segment that goes from um, one end of a circle to, it, it just connects two points on a circle. So it may be a diameter or, or not, but it always connects two points on a circle. Okay, so when we've got two chords in the same circle that intersect like this, there's a relationship between um, the smaller segments that they cut each other into. And it's pretty straightforward once you know what it is. Um, if you take the product of x and y of this segment, of the pieces of that um, chord, the segments of that chord, it's going to be um, equal to the product of the segments of the other chord. Okay. So let's try that out with uh, some numbers. All of my diagrams are not going to be to scale, okay? Because I pretty much is using the same diagram on all of these. So in this case, I'm just going to say, oh, three times x is going to equal be equal to four times six. So that means three x is twenty-four. Divide by three, and x equals eight. Okay. Um, so that's a pretty straightforward one. Let's try one that's a little trickier. We've got the same kind of scenario here. It's just there's more going on um, with these expressions, okay? So um, I'm going to take x times x plus 6, x times the quantity x plus 6, okay, like that. And then I've got x plus 1 times x plus 4. The quantity x plus 1 times the quantity x plus 4. Um, so let's start cleaning this up. I'm just going to do the multiplication. I'm going to distribute the x over here. So that's x squared plus 6x. On the right side, I'm going to have to FOIL this out. So I'm thinking first, outer, inner, last. So first would be x times x. That's x squared. Outer is x times 4, 4x. Inner, 1 times x. And last is 1 times 4. Okay, and then I add all of those bits together. Okay, and then let's keep cleaning this up there. I can see I've got uh, some like terms there. Okay, now I still have like terms in this problem. They're just not on the same side of the um, equation. So, um, you know, I've got the uh, 6x and the 5x and also the x squareds. Okay. So if I uh, try to get the, I'm going to try to pull everything to the right side of the equation. Okay, so if I wanted to pull this to the right, I'd want to subtract x squared here. And I'll do the same thing here. And that's kind of convenient because then I don't have to worry about the x squareds at all anymore. They just go away. Okay, so now I've got 6x equals 5x plus 4. And I, I said I was going to pull everything to the right, but I just decided it would be easier if I pull that to the left so that I have the x separated from the 4. So, yeah, I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. And 6x minus 5x is 1x. And then so x equals 4. Okay. All right, moving on to the next page. Um, there's a, another problem that looks kind of similar to the one we just did. Um, you can try it out if you like. It's a little bit trickier, um, just the way it's going to work out. Um, but yeah, you can pause it and try it out if you like. Um, all right, so I'm going to set it up. 4 times 5 is um, equal to x times the quantity x plus 8. So 4 times 5 is 20. And I've got x squared plus 8x. Okay. So this one's a little trickier than the last one, just because the x squareds aren't going to just disappear. Um, we're going to have to deal with that x squared. So what I want to do here is, um, I don't have any more like terms, but I still want to set this equal to 0. And so I'm going to do that by subtracting 20 from both sides. Okay, I've got it down to this, and now I'm going to have to factor this okay, in order to solve 4x. So um, there's lots of different ways that you can factor. One way is with a diamond problem. So I can use a diamond problem here because this begins with x squared. 
Actually, first I should check for a common factor to see if anything goes into all three terms, but I, I don't think there is anything there, okay? So I'm going to take this middle coefficient there, the 8, and put it up here. And then I'm going to take the negative 20 down here, okay? And the negative goes with that. That's part of that, that uh, term there, all right? And I'm going to be looking for two numbers that add um, that the sum is 8, and when you multiply those same two numbers, we're going to get negative 20, okay? Now I could start thinking about, oh, 1 plus 7, 2 plus 6, but there's actually an infinite amount of pairs where the, they add up to 8, because I could use um, 100 and negative 92. So I don't want to go through that, because there's infinite pairs, so I usually start with the, uh, with the product. I think of different ways that I can multiply to get 20. Now, I'm not going to write all of these down, so this would actually give me positive 20, but you know one of these would have to be negative. So I could do negative 1 times 20, or 1 times negative 20. Or I could do 2 and 10, where one of them's negative, or, um, or 4 and 5. And that's about it, right? Those are my possibilities, where one of those would have to be negative. So I'm thinking, well, which ones can I get 8 out of? And these ones are catching my attention, right? That's going to work if the 10 is positive and the 2 is negative. Okay, So that means the solution to my diamond problem, those two numbers, and you could put them in either order, but the 2 has to be negative and the 10 has to be positive. And these two numbers are going to uh, be the key to how to factor this. Okay, So when I factor this, I'm going to get two binomials. So I know it would have to be x and x if I did the first and FOIL would it give me x squared. And then the diamond problem tells me what goes in the back of each of those. So I've got a negative 2 and a positive 10. Great, so it's factored. Well, I still haven't solved for x, right? Solving for x means I'm, I need to say what x could equal in this, uh, in this diagram. So, but the, the idea here is, though, I've got two things that are multiplied together that equal 0. So I can use the, what's called the zero product property. So either this equals 0 or this equals zero. And then I'm just going to solve both of these equations. Okay, so those are my possibilities, but I want to think through them for a second. Okay, so um, if I think about two being put in here, then I'd have 10 and two, and it's not to scale, so yeah, I know that that doesn't look right, but but um, it it's possible to have a segment that's 10 units and one that's two units. But if I put in the negative 10, both of these segments have a negative length, okay? So the two is fine, but the negative 10 is not because, not because it's a negative number, but because when you plug it into the diagram, it gives you negative segment lengths, and that's impossible, okay? So this is an extraneous solution. It worked algebraically, but it didn't work with the original problem with the diagram, okay? All right, next up is the segments of secants theorem. So secants are lines that pass through a circle. Okay, now you could, I could have continued that so it's a secant line, but um, it passes through a circle. Um, a chord is just a piece like this. And you notice these don't intersect inside of the circle. They intersect outside the circle, okay? So when we've got a situation like this, there's a, a, a different... Um, a different um, relationship. So the way I think about it, um, I kind of just take this this piece first, okay? So um, this part on the outside, I'm going to take that and multiply it by the whole thing, okay? I'm going to take the part on the outside times the whole thing, okay? And then that's going to be equivalent to the same thing with the other secant. So with the part on the outside again, times the whole thing. Whoops, whole thing. Okay, so um, I'm not supposed to say whole. All right, so part on the outside here would be x. The whole thing is not y though, so it's not x times y equals a times b. It's x times the whole thing. The whole thing, the length of this whole segment would be x plus y, right? So it's x times x plus y. And then the part on the outside for the other um, line, a 
and then the whole thing would be a plus b. Okay, so that's going to be the uh, relationship then when I've got this, this scenario, which is the exact scenario I have in the next two problems. Okay, so let's try this out. So setting this up, I'm taking the part on the outside times the whole thing, which is not 9, the whole thing is going to be 12. Okay. So 3 times 12 is going to equal 4, the part on the outside, times the whole thing, which is going to be 4 plus x. Okay. And there's my setup. Okay. And now I'll just solve this equation. So 3 times 12 is 36. I'm going to distribute to eliminate the parentheses, like so. Okay. And then I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides. And it's going to give me 20 equals 4x divided by 4, and x equals 5. Okay. Um, so you can try this next one out if you like. You can pause the video. I'm going to do it right now. Okay. Part on the outside times the whole thing. It's just adding together the 6 and the 9 there. Part on the outside times the whole thing should be 5 plus x there. Okay. So 6 times 15 is 90. <clears throat> Subtract 25 from both sides and divide by 5 and x equals 13. Okay, and then our last scenario is when we have a secant and a tangent. Okay, like so. It's kind of similar to the last one. We still have this piece like we did before. But then we've got a tangent segment, so that just intersects the circle once there. Okay, all right. So um, we're going to start kind of. Uh, I'm going to start with this piece because we're already familiar with that, and that works the same way as the last theorem did. I'm going to take the part on the outside times um, the whole thing. I lost my place. Oh yeah, part on the outside times the whole thing. Okay, so the part here on the outside is going to be x, and then the whole thing is x plus y, just like in the last theorem. Okay, um, And that's going to be equal to, looking at the a piece, the part on the outside, which is a, right, times the whole thing. Well, the whole thing is also a. So it's kind of the same formula, if you think about it, as outside times the whole thing. It's just the part on the outside and the whole thing are the same, okay? So um, I usually just think of it like this. A times A is A squared. So that's, that's how I think of this formula, okay? Um, all right, so let's try it out. Okay. So here the part on the outside is 12. The whole thing is going to be 27 if I add 12 and 15. Okay, So 12 times 27, part on the outside times the whole thing, equals part on the outside times the whole thing. So the whole thing is x, right? So then I just do 12 times um, 27, which is comes out to 324. 324 equals x squared, okay? And then I need to take the square root of both sides of the equation. You could put it in simple radical form, but it's actually a perfect square. So if you put root 324 in a calculator, it's going to be 18. Okay? All right, you can try this next one if you like. You can pause it. Um, here I go. All right. Part on the outside times the whole thing. Part on the outside times the whole thing. There we go. I don't want to get isolate x, so I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides. Okay. 
okay, and then divide by five, and that's not going to go in evenly, so you could leave it like that because it is reduced, or if you wanted to write it as a decimal, that would be fine too. And there we go. And okay, that's all I got. See you next time.